Hey, I'm glad you've joined me. We're looking at Exodus this morning, chapter 6, verse 28 out to Exodus chapter 7, verse 2. We're going to jump right over into the next chapter. Let's read it. Now it came about on the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I am the Lord, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I speak to you. But Moses said before the Lord, Behold, I am unskilled in speech. How then will Pharaoh listen to me? Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I make you as God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall speak to Pharaoh, that he let the sons of Israel go out of his land. All right, let's stop there and look at what we've got going on here. So after that genealogy we just had in verses, chapter 6, verse 14 through 27, uh, that's kind of a shift, uh, kind of a summary kind of a thing. And now as we start this new segment of the book of Exodus, we kind of have another one of these summary sections. And this is readying the reader, the hearer, to hear what's going to happen next. So back in the old, old days, you know, you maybe you'd go to the movies and there was an intermission. Now some of us, some of you today don't know what that is. But yeah, the movies used to be sometimes long, very long and they'd be on two reels. And they'd, if you go to the drive-in theater, they'd want you to go during the intermission, go down to the snack bar and spend all your money on all the poison they'd feed you there. So there was an intermission time. This, this uh, genealogy is a little bit of an intermission. I mean, it's very important more than we dealt with it. But, uh, but now we're going on onward into the next section here. So we're coming to the next stage of this deliverance plan. God is going to do his mighty wonders, and he, with a very strong hand, he's going he's gonna to put his hand on Pharaoh's hand. He's going to force Pharaoh to let them go. He's going to force Pharaoh to actually drive them out of this country. But even in this little summary again, we're reminded that Moses was moaning again about, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a good public speaker. I, I have a speech issue. I have uncircumcised lips. I don't know about you, but that's getting kind of old. I'm getting tired of hearing that. I guess God must have been tired of hearing it too. Like, yeah, you've already addressed that to God. Why do you keep saying it? So you'll notice here also that the, the model of how prophecy works is on display again right here. Moses kind of is in the role of God here. Moses speaks as, as though he were God to Aaron. Aaron, who's in the role of the prophet, speaks having heard the voice, and then he speaks to the people in his voice. And his voice, although it's his voice, is also God's voice. The prophet is the mouth of God. And so that's kind of the way prophecy works here. Now, notice again here that God communicates with the people that he's made. Sometimes he commands us, but mostly he speaks to us. He prompts us. He prompts us to, to use the, you know, use that thinker, use the exercise of the free will, not just, not just rationally, but to exercise the free will that he has so graciously gifted to us. It is certainly the, uh, one of the key elements that makes us the most, gives us is the most likeness between us and God, is the, the ability to exercise free will, to make our own choices, to decide between one thing and another, and to decide morally between one thing and another. We're going to say quite a bit more about free will as we work our way through this next section of Exodus, where we've got this hardening of the heart stuff that, that's going to be laid out here. But I want to say to you right now, there is kind of this active component in Christianity that a lot of people seem like they kind of prefer what isn't there. You know, we wish that wasn't there. They want to just kind of come in and, and God to just kind of overpower and you just do what God says. And, and yet God has given us free will and he, he wants, to, he's, he's, he's building character. He wants us to learn how to exercise that free will because look, we're going to be free for eternity. We're going to have liberty for eternity. Yes, he'll be our leader. Yes, we'll be his servants. But we'll be his, he's a benevolent leader, and he's growing us as a people. So he's going to teach us how to be godly people so that we can live that way for eternity. And he's not going to take away our free will. Don't just plan that like, yeah, when you get your glorified body, suddenly you won't have free will anymore. You know, Christianity is not a robot factory. God is making people who can find what his word is and apply it in, uh, in their own, apply it from their own experience and apply it well and apply it rightly. And so Christianity is, is not a free magic carpet ride. Christianity is uh, developing. Christianity is kind of a school. It's kind of a school to learn how to be a human being. And uh, last time I looked, I really hadn't graduated there yet. I'm still learning how to be human. You perhaps are still 
Yeah, admit it. Still learning how to be human the way the way you should be as a human. And so God made us. Let's let Him be our teacher. Let's let Him be our our guard and our helper. He, we are disciples of the Most High God. Uh, that is not just a flippant thing like, yeah, I said the words, I did the baptismal vow, I got in the water, and now I'm a Christian. If you want to really be a follower of the true God, you're going to have to uh, put your put your heart and mind. Uh, on his will and find out what his will is so that you can be his follower and be his representative in a world that is spiraling to a, to the giant fail at the end. God will use you and I to help people come out of that spiral uh, through his strength and his glory and his love. Okay, see you tomorrow morning.